بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يطع الله والرسول فأولئك مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصدق والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله أجمعين وأصحابه المنتجبين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم وما ينطق عن الهوى ان هو الا وحي يوحى in the name of allah the most merciful the most compassionate respectable audience distinguished listeners honorable viewers assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Today, God willing, we are going to talk about the secret of inerrancy or the reason behind infallibility of the divine prophets. You might be well aware that in the previous lecture, we talked about the divine prophets' infallibility. And we said that the whole Muslim theologians and intellectuals are of the view that the divine prophets should not be prone to error. They should not fall prey to blunders in three important stages of receiving revelation, keeping safe and sound the revelation, and then describing and conveying the divine revelation to the people. And we say that there are two types of infallibility or inerrancy, maximal and minimal. The Shi'ats theologians are of the view unanimously agree upon this fact that all the divine prophets should enjoy maximal infallibility and inerrancy. And of course, the Sunnites scholars are of the view that the divine prophets should enjoy minimal infallibility. Today, God willing, we are going to talk about the secret of inerrancy. May the question arise in our listeners' mind that is it possible that a fallible human should enjoy infallibility? Is it rational that human beings with this nature, where the divine prophets share this nature with the rest of the human beings, they should enjoy infallibility or they should enjoy inerrancy? They should never ever fall prey to corruption or they should never ever commit errors in their mistakes prior and after the divine prophetic mission? or not, they are as human, and we should treat them as human, and they are fallible, they are prone to errors. If they do not commit blunders or major sins, they will or they might or they shall commit minor sins. They might commit some lapses. So what is the issue? What is the matter in this regard? So I do request our dear listeners that they have to pay precise attention to this part of the speech. You know that inerrancy or infallibility means, and the definition is prevention and protection. Or in another word, 
Inerrancy is an inner faculty of self-restraint is springing up from a great source of piety, knowledge, and self-control. I will say, dear listeners, that the human beings, relatively, they are in some way or other, they are infallible. Let me explain. For example, in respect with the burning ourselves, most of the human beings are infallible. They do not burn themselves. Or they do not bury their daughters alive. Or, for example, they do not measure sins. Most of the human beings have this form. Most of the human beings have this situation that most of the human beings do not commit sins, I mean major sins. For example, most of the people do not commit blunders, they do not murder, they do not commit genocides. So think that, for example, A does not commit blunder, does not commit murder till the end of his life. So in respect with this person, we can call him that he was not prone to error of committing murder till the end of his life. He was infallible in this respect. Though he was fallible in cases where he has committed sins, it makes no difference. But most of the human beings, as I said, are relatively infallible. You know that infallibility means that this strength should ensure us against all moral corruptions and against all vices. Some of the human beings are relatively infallible. For example, most of the human beings do not commit murder or they do not kill others till the end of their life. So they are infallible in this respect. Or, for example, sometimes most of the people do not commit adultery. So indeed, these people are infallible and inerrant in this respect. So, it means infallibility means that a person should have this faculty, this strength, that comes out of his serious fate to Almighty Allah, out of his firm belief in Almighty Allah's orders and commandments, his deep knowledge from Almighty Allah's does and don'ts, his being fully aware of the consequences of committing sins. So if a person has this situation, is it possible or not? We have to think. For sure, the answer is yes. <laughs> Because commission of undesirable act or a moral vice is the result of not knowing the real nature of sin or not being heedful of the bitter consequences of committing sins. So think if the human are given these two elements, that firstly they should have the knowledge of all good and bad things, and secondly they should feel wholeheartedly with their all existence the real nature of consequences of committing sin, isn't it possible that he should not commit sin? As we believe in fallibility, is something rational, it is something logical, and is it something possible? Most of the human beings in most of the cases are infallible, inerrant. It means that they do not commit those errors, they do not commit those blunders, they do not commit those murders. 
So in respect with specific sins that they do not commit, they are infallible. So what we do with the divine prophets and the Shiites with their Imams, we believe that since the divine prophets and Imam are having precise knowledge about the real issues, about the real nature of sins, and they have precise faith, they have firm belief in Almighty Allah's does and don'ts, this understanding, this deep comprehension from Almighty Allah's orders prevent them from committing sin. And again, it should be said that when we say they are infallible, it does not mean that external force come and make them infallible. No. Infallibility is an inner faculty of self-restraint and self-control. For example, at least I should say that I do not eat or I do not consume poison because I'm fully aware of it is lethal and fatal after meat. So I do avoid eating or consuming poison till the end of my life. So in this respect, I'm infallible. In this respect, another person might be infallible because he does not consume it till the end of his life. So, dear listeners and respectable audience, infallibility is not something to seem illogical or ir irrational. No, it is logical, it is rational, and it is possible. It occurs daily. It is the hallmark of the Shia theology and a proof of their deep understanding and comprehension of Islamic teachings. As we say that the Holy Quran also is immune from error, from distortion. And this concept has been derived from the Quranic verses. As we said, infallibility has been related to the divine book, the Holy Quran. It means that the Holy Quran will never ever be distorted and it does never contain any bad idea, any, any illogical or irrational material. This is first. Secondly, the Holy Quran relate the concept of infallibility to the divine angels. La ya'suna ma amar Allah. They do not commit error. They do not defy against Almighty Allah's orders. They do what they are ordered. Second, third, the most important thing, the most important thing about our final Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household is that he does never ever speak out of passion, out of his desires. Almighty Allah says, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ He does not talk of his own passion. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوحَىٰ Whatever he speaks, they are out of revelation. They are revelation. Since this is a chronic concept, the Shia theologians are of the view that the divine prophets should, ne should never be prone to errors. They should not commit errors. They should be infallible. Otherwise, they will lose or they will not have the, tr the full trust of the people. And they will not be able to guide the people towards prosperity. So, respectable audience and distinguished listeners, we say that commission of an undesirable act or a sin is the result of ignorance, not knowing the real nature of sin. And secondly, not knowing the bitter aftermath or consequences of committing sin, and thoroughly ignoring the divine laws and regulations. If all these three terms and conditions are met with a person, making no difference, he should be the prophet or imam, of course, he will not commit sin. He will be immune from errors. Why? Because we believe that the divine prophets have precise knowledge, have precise understanding of Almighty Allah. And secondly, the Imams and the Divine Prophets 
are commissioned to a very, very formidable and a very remarkable task, and that is to be guide, to play the role of a guide in the society, to play the role of a model, an exemplary life they have to produce. Such a role needs that a person should necessarily enjoy infallibility and inerrancy. Otherwise, this task will not be fulfilled in a successful manner. La Another point, as we said that, as we briefly pointed out, when we say that the divine prophets are infallible, the divine prophets are inerrant or imams, it does not mean that there should be an external force to force them that they should not commit sin. No, they themselves, out of self-constraint, out of self-control, they do not commit sin. It does not mean that they are unable or they do not have the ability to commit sin or to commit errors. No, they have the ability, but due to their precise knowledge and due to their firm belief in Almighty Allah's orders and due to their full grasp of the consequences committing sin will have, they do not commit sin. This is very logical and rational. More importantly, dear listeners, we have had this discussion in our previous lectures that there are two types of guidance, general guidance and particular guidance. Almighty Allah's general guidance goes to everyone, everyone. Almighty Allah desires that everyone should be led in this straight path. And due to this, Almighty Allah has equipped us with two types of prophets, external or exterior prophets. They are the divine messengers, the Muses, the Jesus, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him in his household, and the rest of the divine prophets who have come throughout the history. And the internal or interior prophet, and that is our conscience, our intellect. So this conscience guides us from within. So dear listeners and respectable audience, pay attention that Almighty Allah has provided us every interior and exterior or internal and external means of guidance for the human beings. Moreover, they have been given free will and free choice, whether to choose the right or the wrong way whether they go to the straight path or they choose to be misled. The choice is theirs or the choice is the human beings. Further, Almighty Allah has said that if you remain grateful, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you remain grateful to my blessings, you will be guided. This is a general guidance. You will accept my guidance from, from within yourselves, from your conscience, from your intellect, and from the external prophets, and from my divine book, the Holy Quran. When you received all these messages of guidance, when you were directed in the straight path by these means, then Almighty Allah would reward you. Almighty Allah would not let you 
and responded, would not let you that you should go and reward it. No, Almighty Allah says, I am Ghafoor, I am Shakur, more grateful than you. And Almighty Allah is Halim. Almighty Allah says, when you received wholeheartedly all these messages, then I will reward you. In the life hereafter, no, even in this world, in this world you will be rewarded. Leave aside the life hereafter. In this world, this person will be guided. And then, Almighty Allah's guidance to this person will increase. The more he remains faithful, the more he remains obedient to Almighty Allah's orders, the more Almighty Allah's guidance will be there. In the next guidance, that is Hidayah Khalsa, it means that is a particular type of guidance that Almighty Allah will give and will offer to those honest and sincere servants of His. To those sincere servants of His. And those ser sincere servants of Almighty Allah are the Divine Prophets and the Imams. What this material has to do with our topic, the relationship is that the more a person remain loyal to Almighty Allah's blessings, Almighty Allah would increase showering upon him the blessings. And that particular guidance will cover this man and will stop him from committing sin. But the more a person becomes defined, the more a person becomes criminal, the more he will be frustrated, the more depression he will feel, the more anxiety, the more psychological and we can say diseases will come towards him. It means he will be a, he will fall prey to all these diseases. And due to this Almighty Allah says in some of the surahs, يُضِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ تُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ it means that the more a person becomes grateful to Almighty Allah's blessings, the more reward he will receive. The more particular type of guidance will cover him. And the more a person becomes rebellion or rebellious against Almighty Allah's orders and commandments, so the more frustration and anxiety will be waiting for him. This is the fact and this is the secret of an errancy of the Divine Prophets. We should not think that it is very much difficult to digest or to grasp. No, it is very much simple. It is very much simple. <laughs> Respectable audience and distinguished listeners, finally it should be mentioned that having precise knowledge about the real nature of sin, having insight, having deep knowledge about these issues would help us that we have to curb our carnal desires. We should not be a simple slave in the hands of our desires. The more we curb our desires, the more we would be able to increase knowledge about Almighty Allah. And the more a person becomes familiar with Almighty Allah's literature, with Almighty Allah's commandments, the more he will create a space between himself in committing sins. The final point, it should be mentioned that the divine prophets were fully familiar and they were fully acquainted of the transitory 
and valueless things of this world. And they were fully and wholeheartedly ready to go to the life hereafter. And due to this, they ignored committing sin. And the presence of Almighty Allah that they felt that was a very forceful force that controlled them. The more you feel the presence of Almighty Allah, the more you have understanding from the majesty of the divinity, indeed, you will be expanding the realm of your inerrancy. May God bless us all that we cannot reach to the level that the divine prophets have reached, but may God bless us all that we have to be successful in expansion of the realm of this relative infallibility. The more we care about the aftermath we face with in the life hereafter, and the more we gain knowledge about the true nature of the sins, that how detrimental they are, how catastrophic aftermath they will bring us, the more we will go towards inerrancy. May God bless us all that we have to be guided in the straight path. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اللهم انفعنا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وجملنا بالعافية وكرمنا بالتقوى إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين